whenever you're ready. Okay, so hi guys, my name is Jonathan. I'm speaking in regards to the claim that was made saying that milk consumption by humans is unsuitable. Um, the secondary claims that the speaker made included, number one, pasteurized milk contains alarming levels of pus. Number two, cow's hormones are not meant for the human body. And lastly, that there are other milk alternatives that we could drink to get calcium. So today I'm here to inform you that contrary to these claims, milk is necessary and suitable for human consumption. When analyzing the speaker's secondary claim, I was alarmed too to read that there is actually potentially pus in milk we drink. When I did a little research, I found that this is not the case and not what it seemed. In Julianne True's article, Milk Myths Debunked, she explains that the ways that people assume pus is in milk is due to infections that cows can get. This infection is called mastitis, which occurs when white blood cells are released into mammary glands, and this causes change in the udder, and it's obvious for the farmers to see that there's been a change and that they, you can't like get milk from that. So, therefore, the milk is not being willingly like, served with pus or bacteria in it. She even goes in to explain that as farmers, they take each case seriously and that the milk from the cow does not enter the supply chain until the infection has been cleared from the body completely. Another secondary claim that the speaker made was claiming that cow's hormones are not meant for the human body. I found evidence on Statistic Brain's website showing milk consumption statistics, which revealed and verified that in 2013, 40,835 million pounds of milk is consumed in the United States alone. This includes both low-fat milk and whole milk. With this being said, I find it extremely hard to believe that milk and the cow's hormones within the milk are dangerous when humans are consuming that much milk daily. In addition to this, the USDA created a food pyramid that provides broad dietary recommendations that will promote health, and it says that you should have two to three servings of dairy products, and it is important for an everyday diet. The food pyramid is designated to help people learn how to eat healthy and maintain or gradually move in the direction of a healthy weight that will reduce risk of weight-related diseases. If milk was so dangerous and unsuitable for consumption, I believe the USDA would have published nutritional guidelines advising humans to consume it daily. The speaker also presented a study showing that milk protein increased the risk of developing high-grade prostate cancer by 76%. I would agree if this were the case, it would be alarming, but the speaker provided no evidence and it is not explained how they reached the conclusion at all. In fact, a glass of milk contains 300 milligrams of calcium, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin B6, and 8 grams of protein per glass. Without getting the calcium, our bones release some of their stored cash to maintain precise levels in the blood. Basically, that means that our bones will be the first to suffer when we get too little of the mineral in this form. The nutrition scientist, Connie Weaver, director of the Women's Global Health Institute at Purdue University, says that calcium and bone health are one of the few things that would be evaluated as grade A level evidence in nutrition, which means there are multiple meta-analysis showing benefits to bones from calcium. The last claim that the speaker made was a sort of solution to the problem, which is saying that there are other milk alternatives. I will agree with her, yes, there are other milk alternatives that you can drink or eat, but they do not provide the necessary amount of <coughs> protein, calcium, and vitamins that are needed. The speaker states how other foods such as spinach, beans, and more, and others are high in calcium, but fails to compare it to the amount of calcium that we achieve by drinking a glass of milk. According to the USDA, calcium in one glass of milk would be equivalent to eating 10 cups of spinach in order to get the calcium necessary. I don't think anybody would say they would want to wake up and eat 10 cups of spinach in the morning rather than a glass of milk or yogurt or cheese. In addition to that, foods like spinach and beans contain inhibitors that interfere with the, with the body's ability to absorb the calcium they contain. Therefore, they are not helping the human body in the ways that milk does. A study that modeled data from the diets of 16,000 Americans found that people who ate little dairy, even if they incorporated substitutes, took in lower levels of all sorts of nutrients, including vitamin A, vitamin B12, and vitamin D. Even though there are different ways to get calcium, milk is a particularly efficient way to get calcium that is needed. The speaker made a claim that almond milk could, be, could replace the conception of cow's milk, but did not provide any comparisons between the two types of milk. I have found that almond milk contains far less protein, calcium, and vitamins that cow milk, than cow milk does. <coughs> almond milk only contains one gram of protein, whereas cow milk contains eight grams of protein. In addition, these types of milk alternatives do not compare because they don't contain as much protein and actually contain more added sugars. Milk consumption is a necessary part of the human diet. It provides humans with calcium, protein, and vitamins that we need in our daily diet. It benefits us 
It benefits us in many ways that other alternatives cannot. I hope that you all can see now how milk is suitable for human consumption and is essential to our daily diet. Thank you. All right, well, it's very nicely organized. It's easy to follow. You do a good job offering some challenges to the evidence that the advocate presented, or as you said, they failed to present. I like the contrast that you're offering on most of the supporting points. That's something that you want to be consistent on because the purpose of the debates later on is to offer contrast to the other side's position, not to simply present your position, but to explain why your position relative to what the other side is saying is the correct one. And I thought that you were doing that pretty regularly here. I thought you went directly after the claim on the first issue uh, reasonably well. And on the second point, I thought you made some pretty straightforward comparisons. Uh, you know, that you get this kind of more generic answer here that says, look, if it's consumed by this many people and it's approved by the USDA, the idea that there's some particular danger here seems to be a little bit exaggerated. And it it's also seems to suggest that the advocate would have needed more information to support the position that they were taking. When you get to the uh, argument about how much you would have to consume in order to be able to uh, get the same amount of protein down on that third point, not protein, but calcium, for instance, I think that that uh, kind of puts it into context why it is that milk is included as part of uh, a diet, because you would obviously get nutrients that you need in a much more efficient uh, delivery system than from these alternatives. And like I said, I thought you did a good job contrasting the arguments on most of those points as well. All right, thank you.